Good morning, everybody. I'm Stephanie Nelson from Razzle Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns, LLC. Today we have a shearing video using electric clippers. We do have other videos about shearing with electric clippers as well as scissors on our channel. Feel free to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful or if you want to keep up to date. We always have different videos involving Angora rabbits. Okay, everyone, we have Libby with us today. She's a rabbit that is new to us. We just picked her up pretty recently, and she has a full coat. She's got a lot of wool. She has quite a bit of length. We're gonna try and show how we started. So how we start with our clipping. We just part the wool, and you can, uh, wool in my mouth that happens quite frequently we just part the wool and we just make a section with our scissors so that our shears can fit in otherwise it it is a little bit more difficult to put your shears through a through a full coat that doesn't have a hole started um, a clip section started so You can hardly see Libby's head and face because there you are, hi, because she's just so fluffy. So we're making a nice little section here that we can start and put our clippers in. We're starting at the top again. We take our time like always. There's, we have no need to to rush. All right, we're going to turn on the clippers. What do you think? We'll let her get accustomed to them. What do you think? Do those sound loud? She's used to quieter clippers. And we will start clipping. We don't need to take a large chunk at first. She wants to hop away. Whoop! And if you re if you need to readjust your bunny, all you do is turn off your clippers, readjust. This is the section we're working on, and she just literally she has so much wool. A little hint is, we're shearing in the the winter months. It's very dry where we are. If you live in a naturally uh, arid climate um, wool will stick to your hands more if your hands are very dry. So if you put a little bit of lotion on and let it absorb into your hands before you start clipping, make sure it's not greasy or wet because otherwise the wool will stick to that. But just keep your hands a little bit, uh, put some moisture on them and then it'll be, you'll find working with the wool just a tad bit easier. All right, let's try this again. So you'll notice that cut, we got second cuts, those are those little pieces of wool. These are all second cuts. That's when I used the clippers and clipped too high, and then I came back again and clipped it lower. So that's something you want to try and avoid, and it happens. So just shake it off. Literally, shake the wool off, and then the second cuts fall out. So she likes, she looks like she likes to hop around a little bit, get herself comfy, and that's fine. We're taking our clippers, and we are clipping against the wool, against the 
the way the wool is growing. This makes it easier for your clippers to go through the rabbit. If you clip with the direction that the wool grows, you'll find your clippers struggle a little bit more and they don't clip as well. We're a little staticky, so everything's kind of clip it, uh, sticking together. We took a little break and checked the humidity of our house. It is 35% humidity, which is why you'll notice that the wool is just completely sticking to everything. If you find your rabbit is hopping around quite a bit, you can sit and do you see the way I'm placing my arm where her head is underneath my arm? Rabbits feel comfortable and secure when they think they're hidden. All right, this is a time when you want to hold the skin. Do you see how I'm, do you see how if I pull down, the wool is different. If I pull up, it makes the wool stand up. And I'm on her side. So I'm going to pull the skin a little bit, tighten it. Just keep it a little bit taut. This helps stabilize the rabbit. This also helps with being able to get your clippers through the wool. Before you use your shears, make sure you always want to make sure that you don't have too much oil on them. Sometimes what happens is they get like the second cuts kind of get wedged in between all the little pieces of your, all the little parts of your blades and clogs up the teeth. And then it really makes, it really makes trimming so difficult. We're doing our back hip section. Now we're doing more of an angled downward motion. Still pulling the skin taut. When you get to their back, you want to be careful of their little tails. You can hurt a rabbit by uh, cutting into the skin of their tail. Also, they have their private little parts to be aware of. You'll notice a lot of second cuts uh, coming off of the back. A lot of second cuts here. That's because her back end was trimmed down a bit. Um, before starting. comes off beautifully. You can see some second cuts. Shake it off. Just nice, long, long wool. Very thick, dense wool. Very pretty. She's doing good. She's hanging in there, doing good for a bunny. Doing good for a bunny who's like, what is going on? Why are you screaming into the camera? Why is there a camera? You can tell she, look at the way she's breathing. She's panting. And there's two reasons why. One is because this is loud and I'm yelling. And there's bright lights for filming. But the other is because she is warm. Even with the temperature turned down in my house, because I knew I would be shearing, it's warm. So we're back. We're going to start doing a little bit of the belly. We took a break, and we still have Libby with us. She has a lot of her bib to do and her belly. We want to take her, and we're gonna, we have our hand. We have our right hand underneath. We're holding her legs right underneath her legs. And we're gonna take her, we're gonna use, see, I'm using my arm and using my other arm. She's kind of sandwiched. 
and I gently place her. You can hardly even see. I gently place her and right between my legs. She's just a ball of fluff, so we gotta get all this fluff off. So with her, she's a female, we wanna be careful of her teats. I organize yeah, organize the wool, make sure my legs aren't pinching any of the wool around her teats. I want to be very, very careful. These are her little legs right here, her front little paws. I can gently separate the wool. I'm pulling it, pushing it up. She's got little bits of hay. I just gave her hay as a treat to say, good job. You can see one of her teats right here. Let's see, the other one's right there. These are her topmost teats. I'm going to separate, I would separate the wall so I can see them when I'm trimming. This section right here is the bib. That entire thing is going to come off very carefully. So we're gonna turn them on. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna just give her a little trim. I'm much more comfortable when I'm not as close to under the under the chin and I can trim off some of this. So I'll use a pair of scissors, just give myself a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of room here. Gently trim it off. Because this is a very vulnerable spot for a bunny. Just want to give myself a nice area to work in. Sorry, hon. Give you some second cuts. I don't know why I said sorry. All right. I'm gonna push it back up, bind the teats again. Just gently use a pair of scissors to trim around. Better safe than accidentally harming your bunny. There's that next one. So we have our areas trimmed up here. You can see this fluff is what we have to get off. Turn on the clippers. I'm going to trim sideways here. I'm not going to trim I'm not going to trim up to her neck or down. I'm trimming sideways. Very small movements. These are big clippers. Fur rabbit. Put this back up. For me, if I don't get the, if I don't get all of the wool off, if it's not perfect under the bib, that's fine. I would rather not cut my rabbit and have a slightly goofy looking rabbit than a little cut. All right, now we got a nice section to work with here. Little cuts, follow the body of the rabbit. Right by the arm, so don't go, um, don't go at an angle into the arm. Follow the arm gently. We got a lot of wool to take off here. Now we can see better. So this is her little paw. 
I'm just going to gently take her cloth. The purpose of our shearing videos, we have quite a few reasons why we make these shearing videos. We, I say we a lot, but we is like the rabbits and I, because we wanted to put shearing videos out there that are encouraging and understanding and positive. We wanted to take away a lot of the negativity or the stress that surrounds shearing. We wanted to be able to show that shearing is something that you can take your time. You can make it a bonding experience with your rabbit. Definitely respect yourself, respect your rabbit. If you get frustrated, then just take a break. Nobody nobody needs to do like a shearing Olympics unless you're actually entered in some shearing Olympics, then you, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't even know if that exists. If someone wants to do that, let me know and then like post a YouTube video. 